So welcome back to the weekly podcast of the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine. I'm Sven Hosford, and our magazine, podcast, and website is a collaboration of journalists and integrated medicine professionals, all with the goal of public and community education on topics of importance, like your health. Uh, we have a print issue that's available in waiting rooms, in yoga studios, and health food stores around Western Pennsylvania. You can also check out the downloadable PDF on our website, journaloflifestylemedicine.com. And we'll have a, a new issue, the summer issue of our print edition, it will be coming out by June 1st. Today is May 13th. Uh, summer has broken out seriously. It is flip-flop weather, and everybody's itching to get out and eat dandelions. I said eat dandelions because uh, today we have as our guest Ola from Ola's Herbs. And I know I'm going to butcher her name, but uh, we'll give it a shot here. And before we get to her, uh, oh, we're also joined by an Emmy award-winning journalist, Terry Taylor, who has got many decades of experience reporting on environmental issues and health issues. So we'll have a great uh, round of questions for our guest, Ola Obasi from Ola's Herb Shop. Uh, you can find us here every Tuesday at 4 o'clock live, and you can also find our recorded cast on Facebook, Google+, iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, and Spreaker. Did I miss any, Mike? That was all of them. Okay, great. Uh, and if you have any questions for upcoming guests, then you can always email me at svenhosford at gmail.com. Uh, next week, we have Dr. Thomas Levy. So if you want to Google him and get your questions together and email me those. Uh, first, we want to take a look at our calendar page from the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine. There's a lot going on this weekend. I mean, a lot going on this weekend. Uh, first of all, uh, Thursday night, you have the Freedom of Choice in Cancer Therapy. And that guest is... Um, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, didn't I missed it? Dr. Boyd, Dr. Thomas Boyd. What the heck is his name? Boyd Haley. Boyd Haley is going to be the guest, um, and one of the movers and shakers. Apparently, quite an impressive resume. You can check that out on our calendar page. This weekend, we've got uh, the grand opening of the Four Directions, and that is a new arts and healing place in Gibsonia. A new name for an old place. It's where Dr. Louis Melmadrona used to do his sweat lodges. And it's run by uh, Peter Shuffler and a great group of uh, volunteers. And a full weekend of healing and music and dance and artwork. Uh, check that out on our calendar page. Also this weekend is the Farm and Garden Food Fest at the McGinnis Sisters in the North Hills up in Adams Township. Uh, 11 to 4 each day. And I'll be there for most of that time. And another great group of guests happening there. Um, one more thing is kind of fun this weekend, and that's at the uh, the Schwartz Market. It's ear acupuncture. Ear acupuncture. It's uh, twenty dollars, and you sit down for twenty minutes and have somebody put more holes in your head. I guess is how that works. Um, but that's a really uh, nice way to be introduced to acupuncture and see what kind of amazing effects you get for relaxation, stress reduction, PTSD, and substance detox with a little bit of ear acupuncture at the Schwartz Market. Also, don't forget uh, June 20th, uh, the spiritual head of the Himalayan Institute will be at the here in Pittsburgh, uh, Pandit Rajmani Tigonat. He is a fascinating speaker, June 20th. And also don't forget the fall conference of Massage CE at uh, Seven Springs Resort. That's in November, being hosted by the Pittsburgh School of Massage Therapy. Get all of your credits for two years, all in one weekend. Okay, so let's get back to our guests. Let's get to our guests. Um, Ola Obasi from Ola's Herb Shops. Um, how are you doing today, Ola? I'm well, thank you. And I guess the first thing we have... How are to you doing, Sven? I am doing great. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing we have to tackle is how do you pronounce your full first name? Okay, my full first name is Ola Takumbo. Ola Takumbo. Okay, yes. Ola Tukumbo. That's beautiful. Ola Tukumbo Obasi. That's right. And give us a, a little short biography of your heritage and where you're from and how you wound up here in Pittsburgh. Well, I'm, uh, my background is my father is, uh, is a Nigerian. Um, so my names are from the Nigerian side of myself. <laughs> <laughs> my mother is Kenyan. Um, I grew up in... Kenya, grew up in East Africa, Kenya, Tanzania. I also actually 
my family lived in South Africa, Botswana, South Africa, and Lesotho. So uh, that's a little bit of my background. I'm Pan-African. <laughs> and where, where did you get your uh, herbal training? I uh, got my official academic herbal training in Maryland. Uh, I went oh. to a school that used to be called Thai Sophia Institute. It's now called Maryland University of Integrative Health. Oh, okay. Uh, but prior to that, I have always been in the lineage of herbal healing. Uh, my family on my mother's side, is, which is where I spend most of my time, uh, are herbalists and healers. Okay, so you do have it in your in your family background as well. Yes. Okay. So um, let's bring Terry uh, Taylor in. Let's not bring Terry Taylor in. No, uh, no, I'm here. Are you here? Oh, okay. I'm not sure. <laughs> All right. We, oh, I see. I mean, you didn't want to catch you doing something embarrassing there, Terry. Uh, Taylor, Terry is a friend of mine and a, a, a great heart and a great spirit and uh, doing wonderful, has done wonderful reporting in the area of uh, integrated health in the past. Uh, how are you doing today, Terry? Oh, I'm well. I'm well. I'm, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to speak with Ola. Okay, and, great. Uh, I wanted to just launch right off with a question. Ola, you yes. said in your bio, and I was wondering if you could explain it um, more fully for me and for everybody else. What do you mean that you're walking on a double-edged sword? What does what does that mean in terms of your, your training and your, your approach to healing? Ah, good question. <laughs> well, uh... You know, I got that uh, sentence, that phrase from a an elder uh, a traditional man from Canada. I was at an elders gathering and uh, I believe he has some roots in uh, the Iroquois nation. Um, mm. And we were discussing how he had gone to boarding school when he was younger went to a French boarding school in French Canada. And I went to a British boarding school in Kenya um, from the age of seven to the age of 16. And um, we talked about how uh, we both didn't really learn our, we weren't fully immersed in our cultures because we were busy at the boarding school learning European culture and academia which you know has its place um, but our traditions have their place too especially being indigenous people so um my education even though i have a you know high graduate de degree in medical herbalism uh i have to honor the fact that i was also educated by my people who I can't show that, you know, with a certificate, but um, my elders in my village um, had also educated me about healing and herbal medicine. So walking the double-edged sword means that I'm walking one edge on the Western and the modern lifestyle and modern society. And I'm also walking on the path of my tradition and indigenous, uh, my indigenous roots. So that's well, you what know, I mean. Ola, that's really perfect because uh, that's what Sven and everybody here at the journal are trying to do is to look at what we can get from the conventional side of medicine and what we can get from the holistic side of medicine and where it can be yes. helpful and, and, and to honor our roots and our traditions and uh, also the newest in uh, technology and, and all of that. What's yes. the best that we can pick and not get stuck in on one side of the sword or, or another. So I think that's great. Yes. If I could just yes. ask you one thing. Um, yes. You said that it all started when you were nine. Yes. What happened, then? What happened when you were nine? Oh, well, <laughs> I remember I used to, you know, uh, when you're living in post-colonial Africa or any country, I think, but at least I know in East Africa, Kenya, 
there is a there are people who live in the village in the mud huts still in out in the in the in what we call the villages here would be called the country i guess <laughs> and uh i lived in the city with my with my mother and uh my grandmother would take a bus from our village and she would come and pick me up she would come and visit us but she wouldn't stay long couple of days and then pick me up and we'll go together to the village. We'll take a bus back. Um, and so I spend a lot of time with my grandmother and all the people in our community, in our village. And, uh, you know, I would roam around and play with insects and with other kids and just, you know, doing my own adventurous, you know, investigation. And one time I was standing somewhere watching a man who actually is my great uncle. Because in our villages, we are a community. This is where we've come from. We've lived for even, you know many, many years. And all our family members uh, live around us. Anyhow, I was watching a man uh, really, you know, concentrating and focusing. He must have had a cigarette in his, in his mouth too. Um, but... He wasn't holding it. He was holding a machete and, and a branch in his other, in his hands. And he was chopping, chopping up this wood and getting all the leaves from this, this tree. And I just was watching him. I was fascinated. I was fascinated with the aroma of the tree. I was fascinated with just the work and his integration, just how he was working with it and focusing and, um, and then I asked him what the tree was. Uh, for some reason, it fascinated me. And, you know, I've come to know that it was the, it is the eucalyptus tree. Um, so that is when I started to learn names of trees and know that these trees have a purpose because he en ended up telling me why he was chopping, the, you know, chopping wood and getting these twigs and the, and the leaves and what he was going to do with them. As you know, this is the equator, so uh, there's lots of malaria and cold-like bugs and you know uh, critters like that. So he was going to be using it for uh, an individual who had uh, malaria. That's hmm. my first acquaintance, or what that I can remember with the <laughs> with the with the herbs and the plants. <laughs> And it took off from there. Hey, Sven, I'm, I'm going to give it back to you. It's so interesting okay. to hear about Ola's roots. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> Thank I, you, Terry. I have plenty of questions, and they do involve roots. Um, but the, thank you, Terry, because you're that's exactly the kind of hard-nosed questioning I, that you'll never get from me, frankly. I was going to start with <laughs> I was going to start with something like, uh, what, what, what? Uh, I say herbs, you say herbs. What herbs should we be planting right now? It's the middle of May. Uh, yes. Here in the uh, semi, what do we call it, semi, semi temperate zones of Pennsylvania and the Northeast mm -hmm. and Midwest. Yes, what's Northeast. A, what's a good herbs to be putting in the ground right now? Well, first thing I'll say is go for a herb walk because the herbs are already on the ground without uh, us even, you know, it's an effortless effort. Um, we haven't even planted any and they're there. And I think those are the ones we must honor uh, because I believe in divine um, presence. Hmm. And I believe that the functioning of the universe is by divine presence. Um, and so if herbs are just popping out, out of the earth without us even planting them, then we, it's good to use them. Of course, the question is, where do you pick them from? And obviously being careful where, where you, you t pick those herbs from. I, I'm blessed to have a big yard and outside my house is chemical free, very good earth. So I can pick, Things like dandelion, I can uh, use the leaf. I think Terry had mentioned wanting to go eat the leaves of the dandelion <laughs> immediately after this uh, this um, right. me, uh, podcast. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, so those are very good as a diuretic, great minerals, a uh, lot of calcium, iron, trace minerals, magnesium, excellent, mm. excellent, uh, excellent plant. And I'm talking about the leaf part. You can also use the flower. Um, I like to infuse a flower in some olive oil and make a, uh, an, a, you know, an oil that you can use for muscle sprains or strains. 
Um, you do. Uh, you make a lot of your own uh, medicines there, right? Or do we call yes. them medicines? Herbal, yes, I herbal do. concoctions. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, this is the time for um, full confession here. You, I did get one of your. Um, I can't remember what it was. Some kind of con uh, some kind of a liquid that I. Yes, the little, immune tonic. The immune tonic. <laughs> that was it. Because I, I took a, uh, a little teaspoon every day all through the worst part yeah. of the winter, and I never got any kind of cold or flu or anything this season. Oh, so, yeah, I give really? You a, That's wonderful. Yeah, I give you a little, <laughs> a, a little shout out about that. Um, yes. What other, what other kind of, uh, what other th things do you put together there? Oh, well, like right now I try to work seasonally. So mm -hmm. like I was saying, you know, I got the dandelion and, you know, there's ground ivy out there. So uh, ground ivy is excellent, usually used for cancer um, tumors. Yeah. Just want to be careful, you know, have it under the care of somebody who's knowledgeable because it can cause some irritation in the liver. Um, now, but how, do you, how would you use that? What would you do with it? The ground ivy? Ground yeah. ivy is good, used as an infusion. I would uh, gather it and dry it and then you know crush it and, and use it as a tea um maybe about a teaspoon or so in a tea ball or in a you know boil some water up and put your teaspoon in there and let it infuse for 15 minutes 20 minutes and drink it afterwards but it's excellent it's been used historically for cancer it's used for phlegmatic what's called phlegmatic conditions which are conditions where there's a lot of um, tumors or uh, whether benign or malignant uh, growths, you know, hmm. uh, where the immune system is struggling to 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 modulate, uh, you know, what is happening in the body and the physiology. So, uh, ground ivy is one of them that's actually out there right now. I have lots in my backyard. Hmm. Uh, another one is uh, dead nettle. Uh, okay. Dead nettle is very good for allergies. It's also out there in the backyard. Um, used very much for that change of change of season allergy, runny nose, runny eyes, lots of pollen in the air. Um, you know, dead nettle is it, and it's also very good uh, nutritious uh, plant. Um, now, you, not related to nettles at all. Do you do uh, but, walks, or, yeah. kind of herbal walks, where you uh, yes do these teach the people how to, what to look for and things? Yes, actually, I have a school. My school is called Well of Indigenous Wisdom School. I love that. Name. And, That's just a yes, name. and I take only five to seven students at a time, um, twice a year, and I do herb walks with my students and teach them, you know, about about what's growing out there of all the plants. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I want. I do want to get to some of your other. Um, activities and the things that you do uh, but first i have a kind of a personal question I, I i live in the city and so i plant my basil right on a basically a fairly busy street corner um mm -hmm. what extra precautions should i take? i mean buses come by and everything what extra precautions should i take or is it safe to use that i had a great pesto last year i mean i had a great mm -hmm. basil crop is there extra, right. extra things i should do or be careful or aware of growing herbs in the city well, I would recommend that uh, if you have a really nice window in the house indoors to grow your, your herbs indoors versus outdoors because, of course, there's air pollution. Um, and, you know, our plants have learned to coexist with the evolution of the air and the atmosphere. Um, but I think it would be better to minimize the amount that you ingest, amount of these pollutants that you in, one ingests. So the best way to do that would be perhaps to bring them indoors okay. um, and, you know, use that one from indoors. Yes. Well, I know um, there's a lot of herbs that you can grow year round and grow indoors. Do you have like a list, yes. a handy list of your favorite ones that you like to keep uh, growing in, indoors? Yeah, well, you know, most of the culinary herbs are good indoors. Um, you know, anywhere from cilantro to parsley, uh, basil, uh, rosemary. Rosemary doesn't do well at all in the winter, so I found it needs that to out. get out yeah. Yeah, and come back home. In, inside the home, it needs to be protected. Yeah, yeah. Um, your lavenders, 
um sage sage doesn't do well at all in the, in in the winter either right um yeah, my sage so most i would back. say the culinary herbs which are the herbs that we need to be using most of the time that's why they're in abundance and that's why they're used in culinary arts yeah well mm -hmm. i want to talk about some of your other activities and some of your other services i want to check back with terry terry did you have any more questions about uh the herbs or uh anything more specific you wanted to ask ola Oh, so many. Uh. Um, <laughs> but I mean, Ola, I think what what you're pointing to is that the herbs that we need seasonally are naturally growing in our environment. And that maybe even from environment to environment, the people in the South, for example, may get yes. a different complement of plants than we'll get up here. But maybe they have different uh, conditions or needs and, and and that the plants are in keeping with us yes and um, would you would you say that's true absolutely and i think that was so well said terry you guys should really get well, to, to know each other i mean <laughs> you could walk you could walk from terry's house to ola's say, shop say, say, a little, say a little more what does what does uh, I, nature yes. give us uh, the um, does it, does nature give us everything that we need medicinally? Do oh, you think? Terry. <laughs> yes. Nature gives us everything we need. <laughs> I mean, you know, we are part of nature, right? Yeah, right. We, I think we've come very far from understanding that and even accepting some of us, of course, um, are accepting that, but, um, we are part of nature and when we were keen observers and living on you know sleeping outside living with nature with the animals with the trees with the waters we were keen observers and when we observed we knew what we needed and we knew what was right what was not right we had more of a of an instinct a natural instinct um, we've come very far from that and I encourage, that's why my school is called Well of Indigenous Wisdom School, because I'm speaking of us as indigenous people. We were the observers. We, we didn't have many distractions and we weren't so far away from, uh, from nature. And I encourage people to live close to nature, to uh, close by nature's laws, use the herbs that are there now. They're there now for a reason. Almost all the herbs that are growing at this moment are, are growing for people who tend to have allergies at this moment, people who tend to, you know, haven't detoxed maybe, and when you don't detox sometimes, you know, you accumulate a stagnant nature in your body. So the herbs that are there would be more diuretic, they would be more good for, you know, constipation, moving your bowels, helping you perspire a little bit helping with an elimination and excretion of body fluids, which just is part of the cycle of the earth. So spring is, you know, an outwardness of, of uh, expression of, of the earth. And of course, winter is more of an inward expression of the earth. So the plants that come out in spring are also, we are part of the earth, we are the earth. So they're going to help us also come outward, you know, and detox, and then we go back and into winter and the herbs that are available around that time help us to conserve energy and preserve our energetic stores. So, um, you know, that's, that's what I have to say to that. You know, I think you're absolutely on it. We are, we must live close to nature. Now, this is a great... Hey, Ola. Uh, sorry, Sven. Good. What are just a, a few simple, simple things that people can do this time of year to clean up their act? Would it be, I don't know, squeezing lemon into water or chewing up those dandelions uh, if they come from mm -hmm. a clean place? Or what are just a couple little things that we could do? Drink more water uh, from your perspective. Okay. Well, as I mentioned, that winter is a time for building and reflection and just conserving energy right because it's cold we need to be warm you know there's a safety an an, an subconscious safety issue you know say that we were living in indigenous times we wouldn't have grocery stores obviously so you know we have to preserve and conserve what we have and we do that naturally 
um, so when we come out of the winter into the spring, it's important to eat less heavier foods, for instance. Um, we, we don't have to have all the, the meats that we eat and, um, you know, all the cakes and the Christmas time and t Thanksgiving type of meals, <laughs> you know. So it would be a time to eat more vegetables, more, more of the salads with dandelion leaves in them. Um, more fruits. I advise people to do this. I advise people to juice more, to take their salads, um, to get out in the fresh air and walk more. That's a very good way to detox breathing, just breathing, real deep yogic breathing um, to excrete all the carbon dioxide that's within the body. Um, get some sunshine uh, to restore the vitamin D that we need. To, for our immune system and for all sorts of systems in our body. Um, and then of course, herbally, to use again, you know, the herbs that are available, dandelion root, you know, versus the leaf is also a very good, uh, good plant to use at this time because the root helps with, with liver movements and, and releasing a lot of bile to digest our fats in the body to increase our um, irritation so that we are able to 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 eliminate better okay so that's a detoxification sometimes we get stopped up in the winter so that's a uh, yeah it's basically it i hope that sounds simple enough i can i can go on and on <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it sounds good um wonderful um i'd like to continue but i'm going to give it back to sven okay okay <laughs> Well, I, uh, uh, you know, we talk a lot about herbs, and um, I don't want people to think that's your the only uh, tool in your tool bag. There, I think you've got a yes. a whole bunch of interesting tools that I, I want to at least mention. Uh, the one thing I really want to find out more about: uh, talk a little bit about your mother and child herbal camp coming up. This yes. Summer. So the mother and child camp um, was an idea that uh, came up in the middle of this really, really cold winter. And I thought to myself, being a mother of three, um, how, you know, it would be really good for us to build more community here in Pittsburgh uh, between us mothers and children and just in the effort of, of having that village sense. And so, um, you know, the camp is at my house. I have a big backyard. I'm asking mothers to bring their children ages 12 to uh, to 17, um, you know, to bring the children and camp out. And we're going to learn how to cook naturally, maybe, you know, make milks from scratch, nut milks from scratch, mostly vegan, a vegan menu, um, to knit and share in music and drum, uh, dancing and yoga and just, you know, living out in nature and, and just, combining our ideas amongst each other that's just that's just wonderful now talk a little bit about uh, your dance and the dance therapy and different things you do yes. with dance and so that's another thing i do you know i actually really do that for myself <laughs> <laughs> truth be told i do it for myself because i work so hard during the week so i have to just dance and it's a good way to exercise it's a good way to just rejuvenate that's wonderful um, I learned synergy dance from a woman named Charmaine Lee. She's a South African, white South African lady um, who's been through so much, so much in the struggle for peace and a unity in South Africa. Um, and I really love this lady. And she taught, she trained me uh, how to put together the synergy dance, more or less, you know, some of it is just my own creation too now, and sh she's okay with that. But it's based on the concepts of uh, yoga and some Ayurvedic uh, material and a lot of traditions around the world. I, I, I incorporate a lot of African traditions in the movement, and the movement is also based on polarity therapy. It's based wow. on craniosacral therapy. Um, and it's, it's activating specific spots in the body that can be uh, 
where energy sometimes is clogged up and needs to be moved. So through the dance, there's more of a current in the body. I imagine, as my students have said, um, that when we finish, we feel like we're f able to fly. Wow. So light, but it's just so expansive. Um, just so clean and feeling so high, <laughs> if you want to say. Uh, it just gives such an energetic field as if it's expanding the aura. And so uh, it's, it's intense, but you wouldn't even know it. And you don't have to be an expert dancer to do this. It's not about technique. It's just about movement. And it's about activating those points in the body so movement can happen and healing can happen. Wow. And do you do mm -hmm. regular classes with this? Yes, the class is actually starting this Sunday. Oh, this great. Sunday, right here at um, Ola's Herb Shop. We'll gather right here at Ola's Herb Shop. There's a studio upstairs, and sure. uh, the classes are f from 4 to 6 on Sundays. 4 to 6 on Sundays. Yes. Is that every Sunday through the summer? Yes, awesome. absolutely. Awesome. What's the class cost? Um, where's, so My students... We think it's going to be 20 per class. Okay. <laughs> yes, but people can just come up and, we'll, you know, I'll always, I'm always very lenient. <laughs> you, don't, you don't turn anybody away for lack of funds? No, no, I don't. Okay. At least I might have them wash my dishes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, an, that's a very good idea, I think. <laughs> <laughs> or come to my house. They can sleep over. But right. they have to paint something at my house something. or fix something. Okay. <laughs> and you also have uh, doula. So you also do uh, doula birthing Yes, services. I do birth doula work, which is just, you know, a couple of times a year. Um, okay. I used to work steadily with the, as a doula when I used to live in the Washington, D.C. area. Okay. Uh, but now, of course, with the business and, uh, you know, everything else I'm doing, I, I've tapered that down and I basically do about two or three a year. And you also manage somehow in all of this busy life of yours, you've also managed to learn yoga and you teach many different aspects of Ayurvedic healing as well. Yes, absolutely. Yes, do I do. do. How do you find time Thank to do goodness. all this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, Sven, it sounds like a lot, but they're all connected. Well, that's true. That's yes. True. So it's not really it's not really spreading out. It's it's more like honing in, you know, adding just adding more um, more layers to what I already know. So and who I already am. You've got European training from your British school that you went to, and all of your Pan African history, and yes. then to the University of Maryland and yes, American, <laughs> the American, and tied in yoga somewhere. Do we miss a continent anywhere? I think we got all the continents covered. Mm, let me think. There's nothing in Antarctica. Well, I have Latin American connections too, so <laughs> <laughs> maybe Australia. That's it. Well, Terry, we're we got about uh, well, we got about five minutes or so left. I think. Do you want to uh, ask a few more questions before we finish up? Yeah, sure. I don't want to bring the conversation down because it's uh, it's so high right now. I'm really enjoying it. And, um, but um, but you're going I think to anyway. what I will start with is that, uh, well, first of all, I love the barter system. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I'm not sure what I can do at your place, but um, boy, the idea of coming to camp and dancing is uh, really, really floats my boat. Yeah. But, okay. <laughs> um we are, um, as a people and uh, on this planet, in uh, really rough, rough waters right now. Mm -hmm. And your approach seems to be to honor the positive and the loving in people mm -hmm. and in the planet, the, the little things that grow into big things and ideas and how this... Um, this resonance, this frequency goes from, you know, the deepest parts of the earth all the way up through the people and how we have to continue to nurture that, especially in hard times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking about myself for a minute, I'll be honest. I mean, mm -hmm. I am one of the, I don't even know how many, but the, the large proportion of people, uh, mm -hmm. at least in America and Europe right now, who are cancer patients who mm. somehow had a combination of stressors, uh, mm -hmm. environmental and uh, mm -hmm. who knows what else, maybe uh, 
emotional, karmic, who knows? <laughs> and here we are. And so what I'd like you to reflect on is um, how we can stay uh, strong through, mm -hmm. through all of this. Mm -hmm. And I, I think mm -hmm. some of the things that you're doing point to those. Mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. those ways but how do you do it do you ever have uh fear about what's mm -hmm. happening do you think we'll make it ola well that's such a deep question terry um oh, and there's a lot there that i want to comment on um uh, you know i'm i uh it's tragic that you have cancer and uh you know, I'm not, uh, I, I empathize. I empathize with you. And I have a lot of compassion for anyone who has cancer. It must not be easy at all, you know. I actually, my grandfather passed away of prostate cancer. So I know, I understand the suffering around that. And a very close uncle of mine who had HIV as well as Carposi sarcoma, um, very, very special man to me also passed away from complications uh, with the Carposi sarcoma. So I understand there's a lot of suffering around um, this disease. Mm, but what and, can we do? What can we do, Ola? Yes. Well, the thing is, you know, we have to, we all know, all of us, every single person, every single thing is not going to be here forever. And uh, with that in mind, uh, I, I too think of myself, you know, one day I'll be gone too. I don't know how, but I will be gone. And I know that in my daily walk, I treat every day as a, the, I've heard the Native American people say this, um, it's a good day to die. I like this term especially when I'm very, very happy. That's when I say that it's a good day to die. And I take from this wisdom, you know, even in the midst of problems and illness and all kinds of things that we can witness out there in the world, there has to be just a small, if we can just look very well and we can, we can capitalize if you, if you like, on the very small light that shines somewhere in our life or somewhere around us. And we can focus in on that and we can just focus in on that and make that really big so that even when, even if we were to expire tomorrow, we enjoyed the light and we experienced the light, the joy, the love, the warmth, um, all that. That, that light gives us, whether you call it, uh, you think of the light figuratively, literally, metaphorically, however you look at it. But that's, that's in a nutshell what I would say about that. And that's what I say about my life. You know, I, I try to look at, uh, I've, I've been through many struggles myself, you know, to the point where sometimes I felt like I don't wanna be here. And how have I managed through that is to focus on, on light, to focus on the positive and not be in denial that there's not, no negative things, out of balance things that exist, but to just you know continue to focus in on the joy and the love that I do have that's available to, available to me now in the now. Well, that's very sounds beautifully like, said. Sounds like, sounds like, sounds like a plan. Yeah. Uh, the, doorbell, the doorbell is ringing doorbell. in the back. Somebody, oh, it's, thank, thank you for being. Thank you for adding to my light for the day. <laughs> Life is calling oh, you, Terry. <laughs> what a pleasure! I hope to see you at Ola's Harp Shop soon. Oh, you certainly will. And for talking to us about all the things that you're doing, which it sounds like nobody could keep together, but because they're so integrated, uh, it's natural for you. And, yes. Uh, you probably yes. even get a good night's sleep without. <laughs> I think I do. Sometimes I doze off on my sofa, as my children would say. <laughs> we all do. Well, listen. Thank, thank you so very you, much. Terry. Thank yes, you, Terry. Thank you, Terry. Pleasure meeting you. Mm. Uh, Terry, that's that's why I, I asked her to join us. She's such a great interviewer and so insightful yes, on so many she's aspects. Wonderful.
thank you for having her. Oh, yes. And thank you for <laughs> I felt like I too. needed to have some questions. I was like, okay, wait, wait a minute. Am I supposed <laughs> no, to have some questions you're supposed Terry, to Terry, too? Ask the, no. <laughs> uh, there's, some la there's a lady at the door with some nut butter. I'm going to excuse myself. All right. Goodbye, okay. All. Thanks, Terry. <laughs> Oh, that's too funny. Well, thank you for, for joining us. Ola Tacombo Obasi uh, at Ho Ola's Herb Shop in Squirrel Hill. Yes. Um, right above the, what's it, the Mediterranean uh, Grill? What's the name of that place? The Mediterranean... Um, Mediterranean Grill, Grill. for 10,000 Villages. Right. That's, <clears throat> and uh, Bodyography is the studio right above you there. Absolutely. And yes. uh, you do personal consultations and... Uh, have all kinds of wonderful medicines available in your store. And yes. What's the hours that you're there? I'm here on uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. And I'm here from 10.30 till 6.30. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks mm -hmm. again so much for being with us. And uh, Thank we'll, you for uh, inviting me, oh, Sven. I bet. appreciate it. You bet. Mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. I hope to see you around soon. Maybe if you need some more immune tonic, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, for you. I think I'll be over more than once or twice a year. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's, I always enjoy coming <laughs> But in not too long. If you continue taking it, then you won't even be here, right? You're right, right. Well, I, I got it. I used it all up. I went, I got through the winter with, uh, with your tonic, so. I need oh, to come over. Thank you. You I'm must glad have a summer you did. Time. I'm glad yeah. it was there for you. Yeah. Thank you again. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're welcome. Okay. All right. Bye. Take bye care. Bye. Thank you. And uh, that, was, that was such a great conversation. But uh, next up on our podcast for this week, I want to take us back in time 11 days. We'll go into the Wayback Machine. 11 days ago, we had a wonderful conference, the Lifestyle Medicine Conference in Blairsville. Um, almost two dozen integrative medicine professionals were there, a great meeting of the minds, and the videos are going up on the St. Clair YouTube channel uh, this week and next week. And right now what I'd like to do is show you one of the, the, the very first speaker of the morning was our own Tempa Lama from the Bonn Center in uh, Greenfield. And uh, let's take a look at that right now. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Good. Uh, I want to thank so much uh, St. Clair and also Dr. Chaudhary for giving me this opportunity to be here with you all. And also, uh, I like what the Dr. Chaudhary said that, you know, we're going to enjoy. And how many of you are here to have fun and enjoy, actually? Raise your hand. Just few. Now it is very important. Okay, it's very very important, and we have to do our best to have a good day. And it is also our responsibility and the practice to produce the best day as possible. And that's what we have to do. Maybe somebody else, the weather, the car, the house, the road might not produce a good day may not cause or produce a good day. But however, we as a compassionate being, we as our own friends, we as our own gardens, and that we have to do our best to give ourselves a gift of a good day. And about the today topic, this morning topic, mindfulness and the healing. The Buddha said, well, there are so many worlds, infinite world, but when you come down, then there is a two, two world, world within you and world outside of you. And we, as a compassionate being, and we do our best to heal the both, both worlds. But now if you truly want to be a compassionate being and want to heal the world, but then you begin, where do we begin? What would we do? What would be our first step? And then he said, well, if you truly want to see the world outside to be healed, if you really wanted to work toward the healing of the outside world, 
But then you have to first do your best to heal the world within. And then he said, well, if you want to heal the world within, that is talking about you. And this world within is comprised of body, feeling, and the mind. If we go a little deeper, then it says there is a perception and the consciousness. Form, feeling, perception, mental formation, and the consciousness. These are the five area, what we call is five aggregate. We have to work toward the healing of these five aggregate. Oh, there's a five, then, then I have to work in the different realm. But then say, no. You know what? If you really wanted to heal the inner world, now what he said is, if you want to heal the inner world and the world outside, and all you have to do is one, one thing, and that is to take care of your mind. No? If you take care, then he said, if you take care of your mind, you will simultaneously, spontaneously uh, heal the ball within and the ball outside. And then what does that mean by the healing? I really want you to contemplate. What is healing to you? Healing to me is in the natural state. Natural state. Mind, body, and the feeling all are in natural state. It's in a very primordial pure form. That means Mind with clarity, purity, and without conflict. The conflict means mind and body and feeling are not just going in different direction, but rather they are all supporting each other to be in natural state. So uh, I will talk more about this later, and then I just wanted to do a simple uh, mindfulness practice, uh, if that's okay. Uh, <clears throat> so all of you, I just wanted to see where is your crown. Like just, just I, everybody try to touch a pet a little bit here. Everybody close your eye, pet here. All right. Now when you feel the sensation, then that's fine. Now put your hand down. Now I want you to really pay attention to the sensation that you feel there. And when you are ready, then all of you close your eye and say after me, ah, we're going to say right long, ah. ah. Now I want you to empower yourself to witness the state of your body. What do you feel in your body? From your toe to tip of your toe all the way to the crown of your head. I truly want you to witness, empower yourself, to allow yourself to attend to your own body. Whatever sensation you're feeling, whatever state of body you are in, you, you enter into great non-action. You neither reject, you neither accept. Just bear witness the state of your physical being. Then when you are ready, I want you to lower your attention to your heart center. If you don't know where it is, you can gently pat again where your heart is, at the chest area. Then when you are ready, I want you to pay attention to your heart center. And now say Om. Oh. I want you to witness the state of your feeling. I truly want you to empower yourself to be as intimate 
as close and open to your feeling. How do you feel? Joy, pleasant, unpleasant, or uh, neutral. This is the practice for bearing witness, witnessing the state of your being. How do you feel? And notice it. Be, bear witness it. If there's unpleasant feeling, you don't have to do anything. Please enter into the great non-actions. If it is joyful, don't uh, attach to it. Just be in the state of open present. Then when you are ready, now gently bring your attention to the uh, navel energy center, what we call is where the belly button is. Uh, if you can gently pat it, if possible. Now when you are ready, you say the hum. Hum. I want you to empower yourself to witness, to bear witness the state of your mind. What is in your mind? What kind of mental formation are coming, arising, abiding, and dissolving, coming and going? I don't want to go after any thought, any mental formation, but allow, provide them a space to be. And this is the practice of mindfulness to be mindful of our body, to be mindful of our feeling, and to be mindful of our mind. And this could be of great help to anyone who want to help other, the outside the world, and also who want to help the uh, inside world. Because usually we are so distracted that we don't attend to our feeling, we don't attend to our state of our body, and we don't attend to state of our mind. This is also the practice of preparing yourself to be ready to face each and every situation as they unfold. And then you ask to yourself how often you are ready mentally, physically, and emotionally when you are about to take your job, about to do what you choose to do. It is very, very important to know the state of our being before we act into our compassionate action. Thank you. Thank you very much. So a moment of mindfulness from our own Buddhist Lama here in Pittsburgh, Temple Lama, very sweet man. Uh, if you haven't been over to the Bond Center, it's well worth uh, going over for a meditation. And all of the videos from the conference, as I said, will be up on the St. Clair YouTube channel. And you can go there by going to stclair.com uh, and following the YouTube links. We'll also be posting them on all of our uh, various social media and such. You can uh, think of our, our website, uh, journaloflifestylemedicine.com, as your .com on the internet. Uh, so that'll do it for today. I want to thank again our guests, uh, Olatokombo Obasi. Wow, glad I didn't do that when she was on with us. Olatokombo Obasi from Ola's Herb Shop in Squirrel Hill, and Terry Taylor, Emmy Award winning journalist, uh, who will be with us again next week uh, as we interview Dr. Thomas Levy, uh, who's written several groundbreaking books on health. And uh, so keep track of us here on the website, on the podcast, on Facebook. We'll be posting regular updates as well. And uh, that's every Tuesday at 4 o'clock here on the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine. I'm Sven Hosford. Have a great day, and let's be careful out there.